Hi, I'm Dr. Agatha Biss. In this video, I'm going to show you the TRIO's internal scanner that I use for all my digital impressions. And I'm also going to show you a couple of uh, little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that have helped me tremendously in the past few years. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and feel free to comment and let me know if you've had any challenges with digital scanning. So the first tip I want to point out, when the scanner, depending on how your office is set up, in our office we wheel it around room to room, so when it's first wheeled into the room, patient views it and judges you by its appearance obviously. So I am a real stickler for presentation and so our scanner is always very well wrapped. The cord is never bundled up, but I find a lot of the times um, initially when we train new people in the office, they'll like quickly put it away and this thing's all tangled up. And that's a big no-no to me. And the main thing is you really want to come across professional, beautiful, like you know what you're doing, you're not rushing, you're really putting this stuff away properly. So cord untangled so I'm not struggling with it when I am scanning. Uh, this cord is nicely wrapped, it's not bundled or hanging, so we always have the same way of wrapping it around. And the other thing I want to show you is we use these little, they're stuck on a magnet, we use these little magnetic stickers so that the patient knows that this is a fresh, clean and sanitized unit and then as soon as we go to touch it, as soon as it's wheeled into the room, I'm making sure the patient sees it and then we remove this and now it's theirs. So that gets put away and then the scanner gets plugged in in front of the patient and now I'm going to change my gloves and then open up a fresh camera in front of the patient and then pop that back on. And then depending on what it is that you're doing, if you're doing, uh, for example, a crown or a bridge and you have some existing teeth present that you want to work off of, um, one thing I want to say is that I often use the pre-preparation uh, scan, additional scan here, so I really, really like it, especially when the tooth is not very broken down, just because it gives you a really good, patients are used to the mouth they have, the teeth they have, and many times in the past when I designed something that was a lot different from their existing teeth, even if they were fractured or broken, patients complained that it didn't feel the same as the other side or it didn't feel the same as what they were used to. So now I routinely do a pre-prep scan and that gives me the ability to go back and compare what they had before so at least I can use it as a guide to do a new design. Even if we don't completely use it or if there's a broken piece, it still gives me a chance to remember where the cusps were, remember the alignment, remember, uh, remember the angulation and mimic what they had before at least partially. And then let's say that we're scanning for a crown. If I'm milling it myself, I'm going to change it on, on the software over there. The first thing with scanning there's a couple of tips that I'm going to tell you right off the bat. Number one is if you can keep the, the tissue and the tooth surface drier, and you know, depending on the patient, you might have one that salivates a lot more than another. If you can keep it drier, you'll get a much better, much quicker scan. It's challenging sometimes depending on the patient and there's limited opening. Uh, the one thing I tend to do a lot is, and I'm going to show you this in a second, as soon as I go into the mouth, I tend to rock quite a bit with the camera by moving fast over the occlusal surfaces just to capture the occlusals. And then once I can capture the occlusals, then it's much easier to piggyback off of that and have the scanner pick up where you left off and get you a nice buckle and lingual surface. So I'm gonna show you that and I'm gonna show you how I get around those tricky little spots that sometimes we struggle with. One thing you wanna notice here is that I'm kind of always rocking back and forth, always going back to the surface, the occlusal surface if possible, just to reorient the model. There's more um, advanced features where, where you can turn off the AI if you're having a really difficult time here in the tool section. 
there's a little button that says AI scan and it, there's a little check mark. What that does essentially is if you have like your gloves or cheeks getting in the way or lips getting in the way, the software will automatically take that away. So it'll subtract it. But if you if you are having a, a tough time getting an area and you feel like you're constantly going over and over and over, I, I would recommend trying to turn that off and seeing if you can uh, capture the what it is that you're trying to capture. Um, the other thing is the zoom button. You can always, if you're trying, um, you can zoom in and get a clear picture. I use that quite a bit with crown preps. So the other thing that I always sort of talk to everybody about, because uh, everybody in the office scans patients. So one of the things I struggle with is all the excess uh, tissue and all the jagged edges. And the reason for that is we do th uh, 3D print the majority of our cases here. And so it is much more difficult to send this to the digital printer when it's so jagged. It takes a lot more time to upload. So I always ask everybody to trim the models as much as possible so that when they go to send, they're cleaner and easier to work with in the other software. So I'm going to just trim that out right now. If I'm just uh, making, say, single crown and I'm not going to print the models, I'm just going to design and go to mill directly, then I'm not going to spend this much time on trimming because we're not sending it to the printer. But if, if it is going to a 3D printer at some point, then better safe than sorry. So this is the pre-preps. This is what you would scan before uh, you go to prep the tooth. The other thing too is notice that, um, I don't know if you can see when I'm scanning myself, but if you're sort of getting into the buckle area, you want to get them to close so you can stretch that cheek more. So they don't, they're not always going to be open wide. And then when you're going into the palatal, instead of rotating like this, you're actually going to stand up the camera and sort of come at it from this direction so that you can get rocking and get the mesial and distal surfaces from the lingual really cleanly by doing that instead of doing that and then trying to maneuver in and out of the mouth. So that's the other trick. I'm going to try and sort of show it to you here. <clears throat> So even with the buckle, sometimes if I'm having a hard time getting in there, uh, I will come out at an angle and then just angle the camera away, coming in and out of the mouth so that I can get a better visual from just a whole different angle of that one spot, especially in the distal of the second molars, that's a, that's a tough spot to get. So that's probably the simplest way is you essentially, if I can show you in the camera, you would come in from the buckle, pull the cheek out, and then re-angle so that you can get the camera tip moving this way and then you're able to get that distal really well. I also, if I need to get the hamular notch, I'll angle out. I don't know if you can see the way I got it, it actually sat against my tongue in order to be able to angle that camera really far out. And so I'm able to get the notch, so if I have to mount this case, using the hamular notches. I've got a really nice hamular notch right there. These are a little tougher. You kind of have to wiggle around, but definitely sitting. I'm going to do the other side and kind of show you. If I am mounting using these, these are really critical to get. And um, so, and the incise of the pillow in that case. And so you really want to get crisp, clear impressions of those areas in order to do that. I'm not prepping myself for a crown right now, so we're not going to be <laughs> doing that. It is prepping the model for a crown with the pre-prep in it. And I just want to, so it's ready to go now because we use the pre-prep, it blocks out your tooth automatically once you mark it. So it's kind of nice that way because it gives you a chance to then just scan the margin and then off you go. So this can be done by one of your team members and that way you're not spending all the time scanning, you're just scanning the one tooth. Often when I do a single crown, I'll usually just scan the quad. I won't scan a full mouth. 
uh, and unless I really want to copy the other side, but a lot of the times we'll just use a quad and just do a standard design. So check out one of our crown design videos and you can see more about that. Okay, so there's two bites and then there's a motion scan. So I'm gonna show you the bites. With the bite, there's a couple of things that are really important. Number one, I find that when we're scanning patients, we say, okay, bite down. As soon as we put, so we put the camera in and we say bite down. When they bite down, they don't hold the bite. So they start to open. And I found in a lot of cases, occlusion was off because they slightly open. So you really want to communicate to the patient that you want them to bite down and then you want them to hold that bite. And sometimes, depending on the patient, I'll even practice it first. I'll go, okay, bite down. I'm looking at it and then just making sure hold, 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 hold. And that's what I want you to do when I put the camera in. So we're always going to place the camera in first and then have the patient close and then you're going to start scanning. So what I did was, I did this on purpose, I slightly moved my bite and now it won't align because the patient's moving. So it's really important if you're really struggling. I frankly tend to redo the bite before I start to align them here. So you could technically go, okay, well, um, you know, lower tooth, lower tooth, click and let the computer align it. But I actually prefer to retake the bite and just really pay attention to the patient biting down. So let's try that again. Now notice how quickly they aligned this time because I was focused on holding my teeth together in the right spot. So because I didn't get a shift, both upper and lower aligned with each other right away. And that's kind of a good sign that the patient's biting in, the, in their, their proper place. And a lot of the times if we are scanning a full arch, we'll do bite two. So same thing. So I stopped this bite before it aligns on purpose. I want to show you how to align by hand if you are having trouble getting the bite right. So essentially you just have to mark the tooth, corresponding tooth on the blue, molar on the bottom is this tooth, and then the models will align. And you can now see, and you can see how the bite is aligned on both sides. Um, I'm going to show you the patient motion. The way I use it, and it kind of gives you instructions and it tells you, you know, keep your distance, keep the scanner still while scanning and ask the patient to move. So I'm going to get like a movement going. What I like to do is do bite and then excursive movements a little bit. You want to be able to position the camera in that box that it's showing you and then you know it's scanning it properly when it's green. Sometimes it's a challenging thing to do. Sometimes the patient doesn't know, you know what you're trying to say. So when, when it plays, you can actually see where there's contact. And so it shows you that I have interferences on the second molar and on front teeth. And you can also open it up and you can see where the inter where I'm hitting and where I'm not hitting, so then you, you can maintain the occlusion if that's what you're trying to do, or you can show the patient where the interferences are. This is a really good communication tool, so sometimes I'll use that. So anyways, this is a, a, a really cool thing. It helps you transfer the current bite, current occlusion to the other software and allows you to work with that so that when you fabricate the crown, it ends up being exactly where it should be. So it just saves you a ton of time in adjusting later or designing it um, in the software. And I'll be doing more videos on the scanner on different features. Uh, this is just a basic good intro to sort of what helps me get really good scans without spending a ton of time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.